So we're gonna make a little uh, sushi roll. So what I like to do is I put it in the middle. The word sushi actually means flavored rice. With the sushi making, it's actually, the rice is 90% of the key component to the execution of a roll or piece of nigiri or anything made that's blended with fish. And then you could just choose any toppings you want, whatever, you know, like some people, they like spicy tuna. And they can get a little bit of a shrimp tempura. Just roll it up. If your rice is not cooked right, you don't have a, a sushi grade product. It, it could be very horrible. So, you know, the general rule is equal amounts of rice, equal amounts of water. Rice from California really is shipped all over the world. Uh, last time we checked, over 40 different countries receive our rice, whether it be a container or two of sushi rice, places like St. Petersburg, Russia, or vessels of rice going out of the ports of Stockton or West Sacramento over to Japan or South Korea. So California rice is really seen in those high value markets throughout the Pacific Rim and also uh, in uh, the Middle East. We are known throughout the world as a reliable supplier of the highest quality japonica rice, those medium and short grain kernels that we all grow in our fields here. And that's the rice that people come to California for. So when they seek our rice, they seek that container or that vessel. It's all about quality. A lot of the rice in Japan, the premium rice, it doesn't leave the country. It, it stays. And, and when you go there, you could buy it. It's, it's super expensive. California rice is actually better. It's greatly respected and it's just commonly used all over Japan. I think, you know, the, the reasoning is because they don't have the land to produce it and, and to produce the consumption that they require because it's, it's an everyday staple in Japan. It's used at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In Asia in particular, uh, especially in Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, trade agreements are really the only entree that we have to that market. The Trans-Pacific Partnership was an agreement of 11 different countries along the Pacific Rim to open up those markets and again, eliminate the tariffs completely. While that ultimately was not the final outcome, that not all tariffs will be taken to zero, uh, it was a significant step forward and in the case of rice, will be an important agreement for us. So for the U.S., uh, it looks like we'll ship about 70,000 metric tons of rice under the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So that'll be an increase in access over what we currently have uh, in the Uruguay round. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there's an off-paper uh, agreement that would allow additional rice under the Uruguay round of GATT, under the current WTO rules, that would be assigned to the U.S. So over 100,000 tons of rice has been offered uh, to the U.S. Uh, as a signatory of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So not as much volume as we were looking for, but certainly a significant increase in rice to our number one export market. And again, a great place for that high quality rice from California uh, to get over to Japan. We're gonna do a rainbow roll. So we're gonna put five fish on the top. Well, rice is the most important one in sushi. It's, it's the, the first thing that you have to learn. It's, in Japan, usually some people, they spend about two years just mi mixing the rice, you know, washing the rice for them. It's used in a lot of religions in Asia in general. They use it for offerings of a religious like Buddha, for instance, a little bit of rice for gratitude, luck, prosperity, life.